Hello, it's Maxine. Today I am doing a 50 signs I was an autistic child video, um, which will probably leave a lot wondering right away. How on earth did you have that many signs and were not diagnosed with autism? But um, I'm 35 years old, so when I was young, that word wasn't commonly used. I feel like by the time I was about age 10, I had heard it a little bit, but it was more so used towards um, possibly level three um, autistic children, which could be nonverbal, um, needing even more um, assistance than some. So that was my knowledge of autism. I didn't know that there were different levels to it. I didn't know really any of the signs. I didn't learn about autism properly until I was in my probably late 20s to early 30s. And I was officially diagnosed with it as well as ADHD, CPTSD, depressive disorder, anxiety, OCD. I don't know if I said that already. <laughs> um, late not last year but the year before so my videos tend to branch out like I'll say a story and then it, I'll talk about something kind of in relation to that or something that just comes to mind but I'm gonna try my best to just stick to the point today and not elaborate too much on it but if anyone wants clarity on anything I've said or any of the points I've made I could happily do so because with all 50 points I could probably speak forever on it. <laughs> so I'm sitting at Oak Bay, just a beautiful site. I um I'll make sure to take a video for you to enjoy. And so oh and as well um as I mentioned about being undiagnosed um the history of autism as well um, we're learning is that girls kind of tend to, to display signs differently in some cases not always but I think that has a lot to do with and maybe this is already a known fact or maybe it's just something I thought up on my own that I haven't read but I can kind of understand why so in some ways say socially girls tend to be more social so they can kind of mask early on or they being social with one another is a huge key develop like for developmental learning and so when boys play they tend to be more competitive they play more independently they're you know they have their toys unless it's like organized sports but um just in my experience and I think most people um boys with their toys and their cars and stuff they're kind of more independent and then girls at a very young age will be social with their toys and they'll say like hello and they'll make them talk to one another so things like that really um pay, play a key factor I believe in that so it all depends on your circumstances like how you were raised and the environment you're brought up in and and just who you are as a person and where your skills lie so some things are just entirely out of your control no matter how hard you try or how hard early intervention happens. But, um, oh, <laughs> one more thing. So another thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I'll keep it short. We're five minutes in. I haven't even got to the first point yet. But the first main thing I'd like to say is that, um, unfortunately, I just have to say this to the point and try not to get emotional about it but I do have CPTSD which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder and most of it is due to my childhood trauma such as abuse neglect inside and out of the home um, addictions just uh, not getting the best care that one a child deserves essentially so I think one of the main reasons why I was overlooked is not just due to my age and 
the information not being there as much in school perhaps, but because my parents were not advocating for my health and well-being. So, yeah. But if you'd like to learn about my experience, please um, continue on with the video and perhaps you'll learn something about your child or someone close to you or if you want to learn about yourself or just about um just to listen because thank you for joining and don't forget to like comment subscribe because <laughs> it helps a lot with um my video reaching the right audience and my purpose in making these videos is to try to like reach out and to help others and while doing so it really helps me to be able to share this information and sort of unload <laughs> at times so number one for 50 signs i was an autistic child <laughs> undiagnosed one the five senses so first being touch um clothing i just i'm like i still to this day kind of like when i'm walking through the clothing aisle i'm constantly running my hands over the fabrics and just to see how things feel like oh that looks good let me see how it feels and I think I make a lot of my decisions based on that, like with what I buy today, but not as much as back then. But the main point with um, touch back then is that I actually like refused to wear certain things like mittens and scarves and things that were like really restrictive. I just would not wear. And often a lot of times, like I lived in a climate that gets very cold in the winter in Manitoba. And I got frostbite like many a times. And even though the frostbite was pretty horrible, um, it still never made me learn my lesson to dress warm in the cold. So that's the severity of my texture <laughs> issues. And I think there's a lot to that, more to that too. Um, for one example, like my mom would call me the princess and the pea because I'd like need her to come fix my bedding because I could like something just felt out of like something just wasn't right or something was in there or <laughs> so things like that um I could probably come up with a lot more examples but I have so many things to talk about that I'm going to move on to the next one uh smell so certain smells would definitely bring on a headache like perfume and smoke and tar on the road and certain things like I don't know if it was so much the smell and the chemicals or if it was like